Hello! Welcome to the next board game stream. This is the second one. We actually made it to two, uh, unlike the predictions. One second, let me just pull up my preview so I can actually see what it is that I'm streaming. Hi! Uh, so, there's been a number of changes since the first stream. Uh, the first big change is that I'm streaming now to both Twitch and Mixer. Um, I was streaming to Mixer exclusively originally, and I really, really like Mixer a lot, and I'd like to make that my exclusive uh, streaming location, but uh, the fact is just the numbers just aren't there. Uh, so uh, I'm going to stream to both platforms initially. I would love it if I could build up an audience on Mixer, and then I could just switch to Mixer exclusively. That is the, the hope. Um, but nevertheless, Twitch is just where more people are. So I'm hoping that uh, we can build some kind of an audience no matter what. So that's what we're doing. Now, what are we playing is, is the question always. Um, if you have been following along with these adventures, uh, you will know that I did, uh, two weeks ago, I did a test recording for these streams of uh, the Dungeons & Dragons Adventure System uh, board game, Temple of Elemental Evil. And the adventures in that 
uh, system are meant to be played kind of as a campaign, one right after another. Um, so I played the first adventure uh, as uh, part of that stream. So I'm, I'm going to continue on from that recording uh, with this stream is going to be the next adventure in the series. So uh, if you haven't watched that, the YouTube link is on my profile here. Uh, go and watch it because you get caught up. Um, but I'm playing with the same characters, we're carrying on with the same equipment and all that stuff, and this is just the next adventure in the, uh, in the series of what's going to be an ongoing campaign. So the plan is to do um, like a few games that have campaign systems like this, and I'm going to sort of cycle them out every time I do a stream, so we'll be doing kind of anthology but every one is going to be connected to every other one. And then when the archive goes up on YouTube, um, there'll be like a series that you can follow along one adventure after another and they'll tell a little story. And, and, and that's real nice, I think. So, as we're playing d and I have an appropriate d and beverage. It's, uh, it's, just, it's just Guinness. It's, it's nothing special. It's not a dwarven ale or anything. Nevertheless, it's in an appropriate vessel, so. Uh, let's have a look at the setup here, what we got going on. So, uh, I'm playing with the same characters that uh, I did the test stream with. I'm not going to go through the uh, rules in a lot of detail because I did that on the, in the initial recording um, and I don't want to keep repeating myself every single time. You'll pick up, these, these rules are relatively simple for this style of board game. But I will run through real quick just where did i put that card of course i'm missing the one thing that i wanted to head out here we go uh sequence of play cards so let's have a look at this so there are several phases to the game hero phase exploration phase and villain phase in the hero phase the heroes get to have their turn and on their turn they can do two actions uh, they can move they can move they can move and attack they can move and move they can attack and move or they can um, do any combination of those things and interact with an object. The only thing that they cannot do is attack twice. So they can do any two things, they just can't attack twice. Uh, if the, that hero ends that phase on unexplored edge of the map, then the next tile is revealed and that will usually spawn monsters or traps or both or encounters or something will happen. If they do not, uh, explore an edge on their exploration phase, then they uh, have to take uh, an encounter. Encounters are almost always terrible and you want to avoid them. So you want to always be exploring. And after the exploration phase where we either uh, uh, reveal a new tile or ha have an encounter, um, then comes the villain phase where the encounter either resolves or all of the monsters uh, that have spawned activate. And what monsters activate are determined by what who is the active hero uh, on that turn. They control the monster, and the monsters are controlled by um, simple rules that are on their cards, and we'll all show that when we get there. But anyway, that's the real, real quick nutshell. I know it doesn't make any sense if this is the first time you're seeing it, but trust me, it'll make sense as we start uh, going through it. So let's go back to the big table cam here. So who... Who are we playing with? Let's do this, because I don't like having a dice cam without a die in it. That's, that's not right. Um, playing with the same characters that we played with on the beginning stream uh, are the Ranger, Alyssa, and, and that's her here. That's her mini right there. And the Dragonborn fighter, Arjan. I'm assuming that's how it's pronounced. That's how I'm going to pronounce it. It sounds very sophisticated, Argent. Uh, and they have uh, several skills that you can choose. So I've chosen um, a build of available skills. And forgive the shaky cam, but I'll just sort of show along here. Uh, these are Alyssa's skills. These are Argent's skills. And I'll go through them as I use them. So I'm not going to go through each and every one uh, this time. The one thing that we got from last uh, adventure is Alyssa also has these claws of the Umber Hulk, which is a treasure item, um, and she can use that in place of an attack. But we will see what that means as we start. So, 
Uh, last adventure, as the story goes, um, our, our brave adventurers had come into this new area of the world and they had fallen into a hole. And in the hole was a bunch of caves and in the caves were a bunch of crazy cultists uh, and monsters and they had to escape the caves. And when they escaped the caves, they ended up in this kind of underground temple. Uh, and they did escape the caves, surprisingly. Um, and this is now the next adventure. So what, what happened was we fell into the hole, ran through the caves, killed a bunch of monsters, and then found this weird underground temple. So this is the next adventure. And so we had a little flavor text to read here. Uh, this is Adventure to the Cult of the Howling Hatred, which already sounds like it. that might be some, a problem. Uh, you have found your way clear of the caves, full of strangely dressed cultists. I like the fact that they call out how they're dressed. You know, it's not the fact that they're like summoning, you know, terrible evil entities and sacrificing, I don't know, chickens or something. No, it's how they're dressed that's the problem. Uh, only to discover that you are not the only one to have suffered at the hands of these maniacs. A few other surviving adventurers have made their way to the village of Red Larch to regroup. But, before you can even begin to plan your revenge, because that's what we're doing apparently, revenge, uh, you hear word that a prisoner was captured by the cult. Banding together with other adventurers, you hatch a rescue plan. So that is the setup for this adventure. We are trying to rescue somebody who has been captured by the cult. Um, now in the stack here of dungeon tiles. Let me try and frame that up properly. Um, between tile eight and tile 12, somewhere down here, randomly, uh, is a, uh, a tile that is an altar tile. I think it's the air altar. One sec, let me just, let me just double check. I set all this up early in the morning and I forgot everything. Yes, the air altar tile. Uh, when that tile is revealed, it means we found the room that the prisoner that we're trying to rescue has been kept in, and then some things will happen that we have to resolve. Basically, we're leading up to a boss fight. Um, so before we get going, I want to point out again, as I did on the, uh, the first recording uh, of this game, these kind of games, these kind of co-op slash soluble uh, board games, are usually really difficult. Like the difficulty level is crazy. So there's a very good chance that we're not going to succeed. <laughs> so that's why they're they're fun because they're really tense, right? It's got that Dark Soulsy kind of thing going on. So uh, I think we'll just jump right in and uh, see where we are. So here's the start tile, and I have placed our intrepid heroes on randomly selected uh, squares of the start tile. And as you can see, our first problem is we can't go to any <laughs> any edge without running into a trap. There is a trap on every uh, explorable edge. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is disarm uh, one of those traps. The way you disarm a trap is you have to roll a 10 or above on a d20. So um, uh, there are items and things that will help you uh, with that roll. We don't have anything like that. So either character can potentially uh, do this. So I think what we'll do is we'll have Arjan do it because he's got more hit points. So if we trigger a trap, uh, if you fail the roll, you trigger the trap, obviously. Um, and uh, he's got more hit points. In fact, we can even show that. I'm pretty sure you should be able to read that if you're full screen at least. Um, Arjan has 10 hit points, whereas Alyssa as eight. So, you know, let Arjan, let the tank tank, as it were. Um, so, uh, Arjan has a speed of five, which means he can move five of these squares. Um, he's not going to need to use all of his move points. Uh, you can't uh, break up your move points, so you can't go, I'm going to move two, do an action, like do an attack or something, and then move three. You have to do all of your movement at once. So if you stop, you know, short of your maximum movement, that's it. You spent your whole movement uh, action. So, um, doesn't really matter at this point. It matters more like um, 
how we, how we want to, what direction we want to build the map out in. And I think we want to probably go this way because this is where we had the most sort of camera uh, space to go. So now here's automatically we come up with a problem because the rules state that if you do not explore an edge on your turn, you have to take an encounter. And let me show you here. We've got our various uh, items that we will be choosing from. There's the encounter deck, the monster deck, and the treasure deck, and there is a stack of traps because as we uh, bring out new tiles, random traps will spawn, and those are all random, I promise. I have no idea what what those are. Um, so, of course, uh, he gets two actions, so he can move and he can try and disarm a trap, but he can't explore. Um, which brings me to an interesting point now that I thought of it. And this is something that I made, I made a big mistake in the first recording. I totally forgot that each character has a special skill. Uh, like, I don't know, like after the first turn. I just totally forgot all about that. So let's have a look at that. Why not? Just so I at least remember that this is a thing. Alyssa, our ranger here, has the skill Scout. You are a master explorer. During your exploration phase, you can explore one unexplored edge on your tile, even if you aren't adjacent to it. Maybe we'll have Alyssa <laughs> take the first turn because that way uh, we can avoid definitely getting an encounter. We, mil we may still get an encounter, but this is a chance that we won't. So I think maybe Maybe we'll let Alyssa take the first turn. And while we're at it, let's have a look at Arjan's special skill. Defender, you protect your friends while another hero is on the same tile as you. He or she gained plus one bonus to armor class. Also important, uh, if anyone's around in chat, um, which I don't think there is, but who knows, uh, remind me, because <laughs> I, will, I will forget about those skills for sure. Um, but... We're not going to forget about them now because now they're going to come into real handy. So I think we're going to have Alyssa move to a trap, try and disarm it, and then use her special skill to explore an edge. And that way we may avoid getting an encounter. So let's go. We'll move Alyssa here. So that's one move out of her potential six. But what you going to do? Oh, sorry. Let's change the camera. There we go. So Alyssa has moved from here to here. And... That's her move action. And now we're going to try and disarm that trap. So rolling a d20. See what happens. Ha! There we go. There we go. That's a good omen, I think, to start everything off with. She definitely disarms that trap. Let's see what the trap was. Ooh, that was a nasty one. That was a spear trap. That would have caused three damage. So... Good on you, Alyssa. Good roll. So that's her second action. She has disarmed the trap. Now she's going to use her special skill to explore this edge. So to explore an edge, we pull the tile from the dungeon tile stack and see what... Oh, of course. Okay, so on this tile there are several symbols. Don't worry about this one. This one isn't used in this adventure. But this triangle here, since it's a black triangle, means that we get an encounter regardless. And this symbol means we spawn a monster on that point. Um, the orientation of the tile is you just point the arrow towards the edge that you have explored. So this goes like this. And we get an encounter and a monster. So the encounters and monsters are drawn from these card decks here. They have been shuffled, I promise. And so here we go. First Let's draw our encounter and our monster. Uh, we'll resolve the encounter first. Um, so that's now, this is now the exploration phase. That's it. <laughs> um, and now we're going to go into the villain phase, which is to uh, spawn and resolve any uh, encounters and monsters. So this is an event. Let's look at this. Cultist Gathering. Usually uncooperative, something has united the four elemental cults. Reveal the top five cards of the monster deck. Discard any monster that is not a human or elemental. Shuffle the, the remaining cards and put them on the top of the monster deck. That's interesting. Um, place a new monster on your hero's tile. 
Hmm. And discard after playing. Okay, well. Okay, we'll do all this first, and I'm just wondering how this how this relates to also spawning a monster, but that's that is kind of related to also spawning a monster, it just means that we're definitely going to get the cultist as our first monster. But it also means we get a new monster. So we've got two monsters now all of a sudden. So first thing I'm gonna do is go one, two, three, four, five. So here are the five monster cards from the top of the deck and we will reveal them. So we have a hobgoblin fighter, not a human. An orc smasher, not a human. A snake, not a human. A cobalt dragon shield, not human. And a gibbering mouther, also not human. So none of these monsters are humans. So, so then we do. Reveal the top five cards of the monster deck. Discard any monster that is not a human or elemental. <laughs> so that's all of them. Uh, Shuffle the remaining cards from the top of the deck, place any monster in your tile. So basically, these all just go away. That's all that this did because there's no monsters in what we drew. Okay, but we do still have to place a new monster uh, on our hero's tile. So that means we get a monster on our hero's tile and also a monster on the spawn point, which is not great. Um, and then we discard that. So. Let's see what the monster on our hero's tile is. Oh boy. <laughs> we ran into a few of these uh, in the uh, test recording. They're real interesting, and particularly in this position. This is a doppelganger. Note the special ability. When the doppelganger is drawn, place your hero on the start tile, already on the start tile, still on the start tile, uh, and uh, place doppelganger in the square your hero previously occupied. <laughs> okay, all right, we can do that. This game loves giving me doppelgangers. I don't know why. And here's here's the funny thing. What I did between the last uh, adventure and this one is I have a th this board game system is part of is one of a series that are all part of the same system, and so you can start merging components. Uh, so I took all of the monsters that were sort of thematically appropriate and put them into this uh, stack. So we've got a lot more monster variety <laughs> than we would normally have. And it still gave me a doppelganger. In the test recording, I got like, I don't know, four <laughs> doppelgangers during the test run, um, which was uh, hilarious, but also they're a pain in the butt. So anyway, let's do that. We'll get our doppelganger out here so one doppelganger and they're kind of a golemy looking guy see if we can get this at the focal plane the problem with gopros is they don't have a focus they just have a focal plane so there we go so what what happens is when the doppelganger comes out um the doppelganger spawns where your hero was and your hero goes back to their initial starting position so it's like oh it turns out this was a doppelganger all along okay sure um so there's the doppelganger that doppelganger is controlled by Alyssa. this is still Alyssa's turn and we have the monster on the tile that we just revealed and that monster is a fire bat so let's get our fire bat here's here's the fire bat it's a fire bat, and that monster spawns on the monster spawn point. Okay, so now what happens? Uh, now that we've spawned the monsters, we are in the villain phase, so the monsters in turn activate. And on the monster's cards, they have rules for what they do. So if we look at the doppelganger here, it says, if the doppelganger is within one tile of a hero, it moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks that hero with a wicked slam. Otherwise, the monster moves one tile towards the closest hero. So, if you look at how the board is laid out, this is a tile, sorry, this is a tile, this is a tile, this is a tile, okay? So he's already on the same tile, so he does not have to move uh, one tile towards the hero because he's already there. Um, and he is already adjacent. Adjacent just means you're one square away um, 
from the from the thing from the object, and it, that can also be diagonal. So he is already adjacent. Well, let's just turn him because he's going to attack Alyssa, that who he was just pretending he was Alyssa, and now he's going to attack Alyssa. So his attack is a plus four, and if he hits, he does one damage. So here we go with the doppelganger, doppelganging. I don't know what that means. Please don't suggest anything. All right, so this is plus four. Uh, Alyssa has an armor class. Let me just pull this up here. Armor class of 15. So he's got a hit AC 15 with a plus four. Five plus four is nine. He misses. So that's good, at least. Alyssa is safe for now. And that's the doppelganger's turn over. So now the fire bat is going to activate. And the fire bat. Uh, if the fire bat is within two tiles of a hero, so fire bats are flying, they can move real quick. Uh, it moves uh, adjacent to the closest hero and attacks that hero with a fiery bite. Otherwise, the monster moves two tiles towards the closest hero. So the fire bat is one tile away. So it's going to move and it's going to move to the closest hero, which of course is Alyssa. So it's going to move adjacent to Alyssa. We'll put the fire bat there. And it will attack with a fiery bite. So it's a plus five. If it hits, it does one damage. So it's got to roll center higher. Let's see what happens. Ooh, yep, that hit. That's 15, so that hits for sure. So Alyssa takes one damage. One damage on Alyssa. She's got uh, eight total, so. We're still okay. I think we're all right for now. If anyone's in the chat, just let me know. I've got some music playing, and I've got my speakers way down, of course, so the mic doesn't pick it up. But if it's overpowering me, or if you'd like it louder, just, just let me know. Because I can see the levels on the meter, but I can't, I can't, like, I don't know. I'm not wearing headphones, so I don't know what they're actually like. Um, okay, so that's the Fire Bat's turn is over. And that's Alyssa's whole round done. So now Arjan is going to activate. Now, the rules uh, for Arjan are the same. He has to explore an edge or we get an encounter for sure. Um, the problem, of course, is he's kind of boxed in. He either has to ignore the monsters that are there, right? Or um, we're, gonna, we're not going to be able to explore an edge because he can move and attack, he can attack and move. I guess I could attack and move but I still won't be able to get to an edge because you see Arjan's speed is five. And so let's just say I kill this fire bat, then I can move one, two, three, four. Well, you know what? I could. I could get to an unexplored edge, assuming I kill the fire bat. Maybe that's the play, right? Um, okay, so let's see, we'll use so there's at will powers, there's daily powers, and there's utility powers. At will powers you can use every round, once every round. Um, like what you can use one at will power once every round. Uh, and they don't recharge, they don't you know expire. Um, both daily and utility powers exhaust after you use them, and you cannot use them again unless something tells you that you can turn the card over. Um, which is usually like a treasure item or something like that. So we're going to use an at will power and Arjan has two at will powers. And as a matter of fact, ooh, no, I still can't. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading the card. So let's, here's the card that I'm reading that's making me go, hmm, I wonder if we can use this. Uh, this is Cleave. So attack one adjacent monster. If you hit, choose another monster on your tile and move adjacent to it. That monster takes one damage. The problem is, from you know, a rules perspective, Arjan is not on the same tile. So even if he hits the fire bat and kills it, he still can't, uh, he still, there's no other monster on his tile, so that wouldn't come into, uh, come into effect. So that's not so, it would be great if both of those monsters were on his tile, he could potentially 
take both of them out. Let me see. Yes, each of those monsters only has one hit point. So he could, if he was on the same tile, he could take both of those monsters out. But he isn't. So maybe we won't use Cleave. Maybe we will use Trapping Strike. Now, Trapping Strike specialty is uh, choose one monster within one tile of you, place that monster adjacent to your hero, and attack it. So he could actually move the Fire Bat. Um, or the doppelganger, actually, because it's choose one monster within one tile of you. Hmm. Hmm. That's probably what he would do, because he's a tank. He's trying to get, you know, the monsters to him. He's trying to taunt them off of Alyssa, and uh, he's probably freaked out that there's a doppelganger that was that looked just like Alyssa a second ago. Um, but of course, the the main thing is that uh, Trapping Strike is plus eight, whereas Cleave is plus six, and they both do the same amount of damage. So no matter what, we're gonna use Trapping Strike. And the question then is, how do we use tra Trapping Strike on? I think we use Trapping Strike on the Doppelganger and pull the Doppelganger to our tile. And then if we miss, we can use Cleave next round and try and get both. No, that's not that's not accurate either because the Fire Bat is still on different top. But anyway, um, we're still going to try and pull the Doppelganger off of Alyssa. So um, that, choose one monster within one tile of you, place that monster adjacent to your hero and attack it. So that doesn't have to be rolled for, that just happens. So we are going to choose the Doppelganger, place the Doppelganger here. Um, so he's still adjacent to Alyssa. He could still attack Alyssa technically if he if he wanted to. But we will attack the Doppelganger. Doppelganger has AC 13. This attack is plus eight. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yep. Sorry, my cat just walked into the room. You gonna are you gonna stay? You could be on the internet. Yeah, you could. I don't think she wants to be on the internet. Anyway, yeah, so yeah, we, we hit. We're good. So the... Uh, oh, actually, he only has one hit point. So yeah, that's it. He's gone. That doppelganger is down. Now, when you kill a monster, two things happen. The first thing is you get a treasure. And the second thing is that that monster is worth a certain number of experience, as you see in the bottom there. He's worth 1 XP. Um, if you have 5 XP, you can cancel an encounter. You can spend that XP to cancel an encounter. So this uh, XP is a shared pool amongst the entire party. So you just build up XP and then uh, as a party decide, if you're multiplayer, if you're solo, then you just decide um, when to spend that to cancel an encounter. So there's our, let's say our pool is here. Now, let's see what treasure Arjan has revealed for himself. Ooh, it's a good one. Healing potion. Uh, during your hero, used during your hero phase, um, your hero or a hero adjacent to you, so that's important. We can use it on somebody else. Uh, regains two hit points, so that's pretty good. Discard after use. So, I don't know if that counts as an action. Oh, you can see her. <laughs> you can see Dax in the background. Hello, Dax. Say hello. Dax is not going to say hello. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't know if that counts as an action. I'm going to assume it does because it seems like the kind of thing that would count as an action. So, at any rate, that is a good thing to have. So that is in Arjun's pouch, as it were. And that's one doppelganger down. Now, so that was his first action. 
<laughs> so I think I may have screwed up. Let me just see. So Arshan's speed is five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we can still do that. So you can move through friendly units, uh, but you cannot stop on the same on a square that's occupied by a friendly unit. So uh, Arjan can move one, two, three, four, five, and be on that edge and then explore so we don't risk, or we do risk getting an encounter, but we don't definitely get an encounter. So I think that's what we're going to do. I'm sorry, Alyssa, but Alyssa will be okay, and I'll, I'll show you why uh, momentarily. So this is Arjan's second action. He has moved to that unexplored edge. Now we go to the exploration phase, so we pull the next tile. Oh boy. <laughs> so we've got an encounter and four traps, but no monster. So that could be worse. Sorry, Arjan. I'm making a big mess here, but we just gotta seat this. So the first thing we're gonna do is grab our encounter. We'll reveal what that is momentarily. And then we will lay out our random traps. There we go. Uh, so all that effort to avoid uh, getting an encounter and we got an encounter anyway. Surprise, surprise. I think, I think my tankard might be leaking. That's not good. Hmm. I may have to deal with this momentarily. It might just be condensation, but that sure seemed like beer. Anyway, ah, encounter. So we have drawn our encounter. And what is our encounter? Interesting. Our encounter is... Event Deception Dungeon. Choose a monster on the tile farthest from your hero. Place that monster in a square adjacent to your hero. Well, there's only one monster <laughs> in the dungeon, and that's the fire bat that is about to menace Alyssa. Okay. <laughs> Under the cover of darkness, evil makes its move. I'm really in favor of this, actually. This is a good thing. I'm, I'm glad this happened, because we want to get the fire bat away from Alyssa and on to Arjan. Um, all right, fine. So that happens. So hang on. Sorry, let me read this carefully. Place... Uh, in a square adjacent to your hero. Okay, so boom, there we are. Uh, now the fire bat is next <laughs> to our Jean. Um, so that's that. So now we move to the villain phase that uh, the encounter has resolved, and there's no monsters that our Jean controls because the fire bat is controlled by Alyssa because it was spawned on her turn. So that's it. We're back to Alyssa's turn. Hmm. <laughs> this is weird. So we want to explore an edge. We also want to deal with the fire bat. Um, thankfully, I have given Alyssa, which I didn't have last time, I have given her this at will, this longbow. You may attack one monster within two tiles of your hero may not be adjacent, so this is definitely like ranged attack, and it's plus eight, so that's pretty good. It only does one damage, but that's all we need to kill the bat. So, uh, I think Alyssa has a speed of six, so one, two, three, four, so she can get to this edge and explore this way, and she can attack the fire bat, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to go one, two, three, four. That's her first action. Her second action is to use her longbow to attack the fire bat. Fire bat has an AC of 14. Uh. <laughs> so uh, Alyssa misses. <laughs> That's, I mean, good try, Alyssa, but um, I don't know. Maybe go back to archery school or something. If that's a thing. She misses, so the fire bat is still in play. And that is the end of Alyssa's hero phase. So now we're on to the exploration phase. So we are standing on an unexplored edge. Let me just move this over here. And we get to pull the next tile. 
So we get another encounter, another bunch of traps, but no monster. Okay. Alrighty. So here's the encounter. And let me just lay out the traps. Boy, am I glad I laid out these traps ahead of time. Last time in the test recording, I just was blind pulling these from a bag and it was all fumbly and stuff and took time and this is much more efficient and I like it more. Okay, so now we're on to the villain phase and we have to reveal the encounter that we managed to pull. And oh boy, earthquake. Each hero on your tile moves one tile in the direction of the tile's arrow then takes one damage. So that's both of them, because they're both on the same tile. This is the tile that they're both on, and the arrow's pointing that way, so they move back to the start tile. <laughs> okay, so they both move back to the start tile. I'm not putting Alyssa on the trap. I don't I didn't say you had to, I just said they had to move one tile, so the option is mine. Uh, and they both take one damage. Great. <laughs> Here we are. One damage for both Lissa and Arjan. The earthquake is now over. Uh, so now we are in the villain phase where we activate the monsters. And Alyssa does control our fire bat here. So fire bat goes within two tiles, moves closest uh, to the closest hero, adjacent to the closest hero, and attacks with a fiery bite. So closest hero in this case is Arjan. So it's going to move here. Sorry, let me change cameras. Here we are. So it moved from, oops, fiddly. So it moved from here to here and is attacking Arjan with its fiery bite. And attacks at plus five. Arjan has 17 AC. So five plus five is 10. It misses. And that's exactly the kind of roll that we like to see. And that's it for Alyssa's round. So <laughs> next round, Arjan. Uh, it's pretty obvious he's going to attack the bat and then move to the unexplored edge up here, I think is the obvious choice. Uh, so let's do that. He's going to attack again with the trapping strike because it's plus eight. Firebat's AC is 14. So there we go. We just, just hit. And that's one damage. So the firebat, hit points one, is toast. So worth. One XP goes in our XP pool and he gets treasure. Let's see what the treasure is. Ooh, we're getting, we're getting fancy treasure. Oh, thank you, Jamie, for hosting. <laughs> um, here we go. So we got Wand of Magic Missiles. Use instead of attacking. Choose one monster within three tiles of a hero. Monster takes one damage. There's no roll. That's super useful. Then flip over this card after use. So it, you can even use it again after it recharges. Uh, I did good. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm using Restream, so there's a bit of a delay, FYI. Uh, this, isn't, this isn't the nice FTL thing that Mixer usually has. Anyway, so that's good. Uh, the, the fighter has a wand of magic missiles, because, you know, fantasy. Um, Jamie, I don't know if you're still around. Uh, if you are, let me know how the stream is looking, because I was getting some some red in the uh, the bandwidth, despite the fact that I've, I've really choked my bandwidth. So I don't know. Hopefully we're not stuttering too much. I hope it's okay. We're also streaming at 30 FPS, so I mean, like, it should be fine. Um, oh, right, we probably want to get rid of the fire bat. Well, let's do that. Okay, so that was good. That was our successful attack. 
Uh, I'm watching on the Roku via Twitch and chatting with <laughs> Mixer. Looks good here. Good. Awesome. Well, so there we go. There's why I have viewers in both places. <laughs> it's good. Hey, one viewer is better than no viewers, right? Um, so he's going to move, or Jean's going to move up to this edge. I'm sure he can get there. Five, one, two, three, four. Yeah, he can just, just get there. And we reveal the next tile. Oh, what is with the encounters? I swear I shuffled these. Um, so we've got an encounter, two traps, and no monsters. We're not deep on monsters, but man, we are getting the encounters. Okay. So we reveal the tile. Let's put the traps out. Trap, trap. We are now totally uh, boxed in <laughs> with traps. So we're going to have to uh, look, actually look at the overhead cam now. See how that's looking? That looks okay. You can't see much detail, but, uh, you know, uh, you can. It, it's, it's a nice kind of overview, I think. But, yeah, we are completely boxed in with traps. We're going to have to disarm a trap before we can explore an edge. So, hmm. Hmm. Let's see if we can move this here. Maybe that's a better better view. Does that seem a little nicer? Yeah, I think so. So we have revealed that edge, so we've got to pull an encounter. We do not have enough XP to cancel any encounter, so whatever happens is going to happen. Oh, this is nasty. Sniper shots. <clears throat> Cultists of air fancy themselves marksmen, of course, because I don't, here's, let me show you, here's a, here's an air cultist. He has a crossbow, see? So, <laughs> the cultists of air fancy themselves as marksmen attack each hero, each hero, doesn't matter where they are, uh, with a plus six. Oh, we got a host from Pepster. Thank you so much. That's, uh, very generous. Um, so, plus six is two damage if it hits and one damage if it misses. How does an arrow do a damage if it misses? I don't know. I don't know. That's just... It doesn't seem fair, but oh well. Okay, so let's attack... Let's attack Arjan first because he's the tough lizard. He can take it. This is a plus six. He has AC 17. 11 or higher hits, he miss, so he takes one damage. So that's two damage on Arjan. And attack Alyssa. Alyssa has AC 15, so they have to roll nine or higher. And yeah, I know, really, right? <laughs> it's like, yeah. Uh, they definitely hit Alyssa, so that's two damage for Alyssa. Alyssa's got four damage. Alyssa is now at half health. <sighs> Here we go. See, this is this is where we are already. That's <laughs> that's the story. Uh, okay, so that encounter has been resolved. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, these games are hard. I'm surprised I ever win one. I mean, the, most of the time, you don't win. Um, as Jamie can attest to, <laughs> we've we've lost more than our fair share of these. But, we press on. So, that was the villain phase for Arjan. Uh, and that is it. So now we're on to Alyssa. We are actually at an advantage here because she is standing next to an unexplored edge. Um, yeah, we definitely need to. Well, we do. We've got, we've got two. We have two XP. See, Jamie, we've got two. We only have two because we're not getting any monsters. We're only getting encounters. It's it's insane. I've never seen this few number of monsters in one of these games. Yeah, it's it is well. I mean, it's, it has to be because it's a co-op board game, right? So you're it's you versus the game. So yeah, no, it's just the way it is. Um, you can do house rules to make it a little bit easier. And in fact, we are doing one house rule to make it a bit easier. So um, 
the game itself recommends. Yo, oh yeah, no, it can be real funny. Uh, the game itself recommends that. So what you have is when your heroes go to zero hit points, they are knocked out, and then you have to spend one of these healing surges to pick them back up. Um, you have a limited number of healing surges. So normally the game gives you two healing surges, but it says if you want to if you want to lower the difficulty, then you can give yourself three healing surges. So that's what we've got. We've got three three healing surges. So we're giving ourselves a fair chance. I figure after we get enough treasure that we can level up, then I'll go to two healing surges because then it'll be a little bit better balanced. But for now we're we're doing three healing surges. So we're still okay. We're still within the realm of of not totally uh, screwed yet. Anyway, back to Alyssa's turn. So she, um, I just took a look at the board. You have any trap tokens that aren't on the board? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So Jamie, you're not used to playing this version of the game. This there's a lot of there's a lot of traps in this game, but the traps work differently in this game than they do in the others. In the other games, the traps are uh, are all on events and on this they're not they're actually just traps that are in the dungeon and you have to either disarm them or trigger them or, or whatever um but but they're not on the event cards they're actually just traps in the game i actually think i like this a bit better um so speaking of traps what we have yeah there's a lot of traps well that's what i was saying we're totally we're totally boxed in we have to disarm a trap in order to move forward in any direction right now uh so Alyssa is standing next to, she's standing adjacent to a trap, so she doesn't have to spend an action to move. So she can try and disarm that trap, hopefully succeed, <laughs> and then uh, move on to the next uh, square. Uh, so, and that will mean that she's standing on an unexplored edge and we can reveal the edge and, and see if we get any monsters. I don't know. Anyway, we'll see. But anyway, she's going to she's going to try and disarm this trap right here. So she's got to roll 10 or higher. That is it. Real simple. <sighs> Cross your fingers. Really? Really? That's the OK. Excuse me. Okay, so um, she fails. Uh, it's always as squishy as it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, usually. She's not even that squishy, thankfully. I mean, she's a ranger, right? So she's still got decent uh, hit points. Um, I figured if I'm, if I'm only using two characters, I'm not putting a wizard in here because a wizard would just die immediately. Um, which is unfortunate because there's some very cool wizard characters. But anyway, so she fails to disarm that trap. If you fail to disarm a trap, you, of course, trigger the trap. So let's see what kind of tra Oh, my God. That's a spear trap for three damage. That's brutal. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. She is at one hit point. Alyssa is down to one hit point already. Oh, that is painful. There we go, just to show. There, see, that's not good. That's what we call bad. <laughs> um, but when a trap is triggered, it does go away. Yeah, I know, right, Jamie? It, yeah, this game, it's just, it's killer. That's what makes winning so much fun. Right? That's how Dark Souls works, right? I think. I don't know, I've never actually played a Dark Souls game, and I never will. <sighs> okay, but anyway, she's got, so she did her one action, failed to disarm a trap. Her next action is she's gonna move, so she's gonna move onto the square, um, where the trap was, so that means she is on an unexplored edge. And I'm just remembering that Alyssa has her special scout skill that lets her explore an edge even if she's not adjacent to it, but I'm not smart, so I forgot that. <laughs> but it doesn't really matter. Anyway. 
Yeah, it doesn't matter either way. She would still have to... Yeah, it's still, it's, it's still an action, so she would still be doing this, so it doesn't... It, it all comes out to the same thing. So anyway, that's the end of her hero phase. We're on the exploration phase. We pull a dungeon tile. All right, here we go. Are you ready? Let's see if we get any monsters. <sighs> okay, we get an encounter and a monster. Um... It, it would have let me skip the trap, but I would still, like, I still couldn't move through the trap. Um, and monsters don't trigger traps, so it's not like I could go, oh, well, I'll just explore that edge and draw the monster to me and let it trigger the trap, because no, that's not... Monsters don't... They have video game rules. Monsters don't trigger traps. It's terrible. We still would have had to deal with that trap to move forward. <sighs> so we got an encounter and a monster which is lose-lose. So we will pull our encounter and our monster, and these are both Alyssa's. So now we move to the villain phase. We will reveal our encounter, which is a hailstorm. <laughs> this game. <sighs> Attack each year over a plus seven. So no matter what, Alyssa's going down this round. She's only got one hit point. <laughs> so I don't even really have to roll for Alyssa. Because, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I know. I know. It's okay. We've got three healing surges and we've actually got a fair number of tiles out. So we're still, we're not, we're not out of it now. We're not out of the game yet. I know we. It got so bad that when when we played this as a group frequently, we had like a house rule that encounters didn't happen automatically. There was like a fifty fifty chance, and you could roll a die. I can't even remember the rule that we made up to like reduce the number of encounters was. But um, I'm playing hardcore right now. This is, you know, we're doing it for real. So anyway, yeah, we got to do it. We got to do it. It's the rules. I'm not streaming board games and then not playing by the rules. Okay, so let's do that first um, for an important reason. This may actually end up working to our advantage, and we'll see why in a second. So the first thing that happens is Alyssa goes down no matter what. So Alyssa is, is KO'd. And that's it for her for the moment. Yes, yes, the Lizard Wizard. Um, I still have the Lizard Wizard around somewhere. I can't even remember what his name was. I don't remember. But I have his, he's one of the few minis that I ever actually painted. Um, I should, I should get back into that. I have so many minis now that I would never finish painting them. Um, so anyway, there is that. Now we have to attack our Jean. So it's a plus seven. Where did I, I've lost my... I die. I put it somewhere. I've lost my nice, pretty die. Oh, there it is. <laughs> this is going well. So, it's plus seven. Arjan has a 17 AC. Ah, finally, a roll in our favor. <laughs> the hailstorm rolls a one. Um, so, it means it misses, but it still does the damage. So, Arjan takes... Another damage. John is still in relatively good shape. He has 10 hit points and 3 damage, so that's still not terrible. <laughs> okay, so that is the end of Alyssa's turn. So Alyssa is, is knocked out. She's KO'd. Um, now it's Arjan's turn. Oh, no, sorry. We haven't, uh, we haven't spawned the monster yet. So that encounter is done now. <laughs> now we spawn the monster. And the monster is a troglodyte. Jamie, if you're if you're there, could you tell me, can you read that card if I'm still on this screen without switching cameras? Um, just let me know. I think I'm looking at a full screen and I can just barely make it out. So I'm hoping that I'm hoping to not have to switch cameras so often is, is what it comes down to. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm, well, I've got some glare here that I'm not crazy about. I gotta get some phone cores or something and, and do some reflecting, but overall I think it looks it looks better than the old one. Okay, so it is still it is still better if I switch to 
the big old dice cam. Anyway, so we're going to spawn a troglodyte um, on that point. Our oh, troglodytes are smelly. I remember these guys. Here we go. So there's our, our troglodyte. Um, so yes, if the troglodyte is within one tile of a hero, it moves uh, adjacent to the closest hero, it attacks the hero with the disease claws. Otherwise, the monster moves one tile to the closest hero. It has a special ability. A hero that begins his or her hero phase adjacent to the troglodyte gains disadvantage. And we'll get into what that is momentarily. <laughs> but um, this is actually kind of works to our advantage because you see Alyssa is knocked out. So she does not count. She's out of it for this round. She's, you know, it's going to ignore her. So it's going to move, uh, yes, they are smelly bastards. It's going to move one tile, one tile, one tile towards the closest hero. The closest hero is Arjan. He's over here. So it's only going to move to this tile. Um, and that's it. That's all it can do uh, this round. So that is actually okay because it can't do any damage this round. So now that is the end of Alyssa's turn. She controls this trog so I'll just put it here and now we're on to Arshan's turn so um, he heard a bunch of stuff happening behind him he's like what happened he, I heard it screaming <sighs> so he I guess is gonna double back it means we won't be exploring edge so we will have to pull an encounter um, so yeah, he does have, so we've got Trapping Strike, and the Trapping Strike is, choose a monster within one tile of you, place that monster adjacent to your hero to attack it, so he can pull the, um, does this count at one tile, yes, he is one tile away, so yeah, that's not a bad plan, actually, he can pull the Trog to him, hopefully kill it, Probably will. Does the Trog have Trog only has one hit point and it's got eleven AC, so he can probably uh, he can probably do it. Um, in which case he can do that as, as his attack. He still can't get to an unexplored edge though. Because there's traps everywhere. <laughs> so it's probably still the thing to do. Although I don't know, is that the thing to do or is moving closer to Alyssa the thing to do. Um, because next round we're going to spend uh, a healing surge and she's going to come back up, but she's going to come back up at half health and be standing near a trog. <laughs> so, you know, hmm. Hmm. I think Arjan's trapping strike ability is just cool. Like, he would do that anyway, right? He's still getting the trog away from Alyssa. That makes sense. So I think we'll do that. We'll do Trapping Strike. And so... He pulls the Trog to... Adjacent to him. Turn him around. Hello, smelly Trog the Dite. Yeah, yeah, the disadvantage is bad. Um, that reminds me, I, I gotta pull out a second D20 if, if we need it. Uh, okay, anyway, he's gonna attack. He's probably going to hit it. Probably. He, oh, yeah. He hits. He hits. There we go. So the Trog is dead. Trog is down. So Troglodyte is worth one XP. That goes into our pool. We now have three XP. Still not enough to cancel an encounter. But the Trog is not a problem anymore. And treasure. Arjan gets... Another treasure. John is racking up the treasure here. And it's a pouch of copper. Gain 100 gold pieces. I'm not going to switch to the big camera for that because that is pretty straightforward. We have a bag of a bag of gold pieces here. And John will get 100 gold pieces. And that is it. And then we can just get rid of this card. Uh-huh. So... Um, that was his attack. Now he's got to move. I mean, 
I think let's move closer to Alyssa because we can go this way without having to deal with traps. We're going to pull an encounter no matter what, so that's just the way it is. Um, and his move is five, so one, two, three, four, five. So he will be adjacent to Alyssa when she stands up. But end of hero phase, beginning of oh, villain or exploration phase. We're not exploring an edge, so we pull an encounter. Now we begin. Yeah, yeah, finally, no traps. Um, so now we begin the villain phase with our encounter, and our encounter is... Event Cut Purse. Lose 200 gold pieces. If your hero doesn't have 200 gold pieces, he or she takes two damage. Well, here's the thing. In their previous adventure, they both earned gold. So Arjan actually has a total of... I got it written down because I didn't want to pull out all the stuff. So he has a total of... Uh, 400 gold pieces right now. So we just get rid of this. We'll just put this here. Um, I don't have a pencil. I can't make it. I'll remember. I'll remember. He's only got 200 gold pieces. I'll remember. In fact, in fact here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put their current gold piece level on their cards. So Arjan has 200 because... He had 400, 200 just got stolen. And Alyssa has 400. So at the end, I will tally all this up and record it on their character sheets. OK. So that that was OK. Nobody, nobody took damage. That's, that's okay. We lost money. That's all that means. I'll happily lose money to not take damage. So that is the end of the villain phase for Arjan. Now we move on to Alyssa's hero phase. As Alyssa is knocked out, we have to spend one of our three healing surges. And Alyssa comes back. And she comes back, if you see... Here, oh sorry, let me switch to this. She has her surge value is four hit points. So that means that when she gets resurrected, she comes back at four hit points. So it means that she is at half. So let me just grab four damage. So we know that is the case. So this is back. That uh, counts as an action. So the other thing that she can do is move. So obviously we're going to move to this edge and explore. So let me just push that that way. We're starting to fill up our space here. Um, her speed is six, so she's good. One, two, three, four. And next tile, exploring edge. Finally, finally, no encounter, but Three monsters. Remember that thing I was saying before about where are all the monsters? Found them. <laughs> okay. Um, this pool of whatever it is here, don't worry about that. That's just flavor text for a different adventure. That will come into play later. For the moment, this is just a regular dungeon tile. Um, three monsters. One, two, three. Okay. What monsters do we have? First, a fire bat. That's not so bad. We'll say this is the first spawn point. Next, an earth cultist. And uh, he's got a big club. So let's see. Now, I put all of the cultists in the same box, I thought. Maybe I'm wrong. Nope, there he is. There is an Earth Cultist. Right there. And last... Oh, okay. A Knoll Archer. These are big guys, if I remember. Yeah, these are big dudes. So, there we go. <laughs> That's what we're looking at now. 
and they are all going to activate now. Guess who they're going to be attacking? <laughs> oh, Alyssa. As Jamie has pointed out, you need to stop face tanking the entire dungeon. <laughs> Yeah, I know. How many tiles do we have out? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're actually not doing too bad because the tile we have to get to is between eight and 13. So we're, we're okay. We still stand a chance of not completely failing. <laughs> um, and Alyssa's got a couple of tricks up her sleeve. So, so we're not, we're not out of the woods yet. Um, so the fire bat is the first one that's going to activate. If the fire bat was within two tiles, it moves adjacent to the closest hero. That's Alyssa. And attacks with a fiery bite. So attacks with a plus five. Yeah, Alyssa is definitely captain of the healing surges. Uh, Alyssa's got an AC of 15, so it's got to roll 10 or higher. Oh. <laughs> yep, it sure did that. So one more damage for Alyssa. So Alyssa's got five now. Let's get the 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 handy five damage token. All right. Uh, and that is Firebat's turn. The next is the Earth Cultist. If the Earth Cultist, let's look at his tactics. The Earth Cultist is within one tile of a hero, moves adjacent to the closest hero, attacks that hero with a stone club. And if it hits, it does two damage. That's brutal. So he's going to move adjacent to Alyssa. So that is the shortest trip to get adjacent to her. And attacks plus seven. Oh man, that's brutal. Brutal. No, he misses. Excellent. That is exactly what we wanted to happen there. And finally, the Null Archer. And the Null Archer is does not move because he's an archer. So he has a ranged attack. If he is within two tiles of, uh, of a hero, it attacks the hero within two tiles with the fewest hit points remaining. So that's definitely Alyssa. <laughs> Uh, with an arrow, so it's plus seven, uh, but only does one damage. So, I mean, this wouldn't be the end of the world if he hits, but it still wouldn't be good. It's plus seven, she has 15. Guess what? Yeah, he hits. So, Alyssa's got six damage. She's got two hit points left. She isn't down completely. And... Look at it this way. When we kill these guys, we'll have enough XP to cancel the next encounter. <laughs> that's the that's the positive attitude. That's the way to look at it. Um, so that is Alyssa's entire turn. Uh, now we're on to Arjan. Hmm. Arjan has that healing potion. Hmm. I think here's okay here's my plan. Arjan is going to Arjan's movement is five. One, two, three, four, five, so he can get here. And that will mean Oh no, he's not on the same tile, so we can't use cleave. Bugger. I had a whole plan, and the plan isn't going to work. Uh, okay, so maybe he should still do that because he can be adjacent to Alyssa, and if he's adjacent to Alyssa, he can use the healing potion on her. Um, yeah, really, you know, <laughs> you have to be adjacent, unfortunately. You can't, I don't know if I'd want to throw a healing potion anyway. It's like, what if you miss, right? Like, those things are in glass bottles, I assume. Wait a minute, why would you put a healing potion in a glass bottle? Why wouldn't you put it in, like, a leather bottle? Leather bottles are actually more common. <laughs> anyway, here's a pro tip for all you dungeon crawlers. Put your healing potions in leather bottles. Maybe he, maybe whatever healing potions are made out of eat through leather. 
We're going down a, a Tolkien hole here. Level of detail. Okay, anyway, I say we move adjacent to Alyssa and attack. Attack the guy with the club who does a lot of damage. How about that? So, one, two, three, four, five. There's his movement action done. And he's going to attack the Earth Cultist. The Earth Cultist has two hit points. So, he can't. Uh, yes, a canteen. Thank you, Jamie. I don't know, metal's, metal's a tricky thing, right? I mean, it's used for armor, and, maybe, you know, it corrodes. Maybe whatever healing potions are made of is corrosive. I don't know. I'm making shit up. You know, I'm making shit up in this fantasy world. Um, hmm. I'm tempted to actually use... I'm tempted to actually use one of his special fancy powers. And the power I'm tempted to use is this one. So this is daily, so it means that I can't use it again unless uh, a special event lets me flip it back over. But uh, Brutal Strike, uh, it's only a plus five, but if I hit it, do four damage. Uh, so that would kill him. Um, but if I miss, I can, I don't have to spend it. I can use it again. So that's kind of tempting. Hmm. Thing is, we're, in order to win this adventure, we do have to face a boss fight. And I'll let you know right now, the boss is not a pushover. <laughs> so we might want to save the heavy hitters in the event that we get that far. Um, so maybe we should just whittle this guy down. Oh, you know what? Okay, here's a plan. I have a better plan. And the plan is, Alyssa has a at-will skill called Careful Attack. Uh, one adjacent monster takes one damage. There's no roll. So what we can do is have our Jean attack, do a damage, then on Alyssa's turn, she can use this do the do the, the last point of damage and then the uh, the club wielding guy goes down and he doesn't get a chance to attack. I think that's probably our best our best odds <laughs> for for success because the brutal strike is only a plus five and his AC is sixteen. So that's like mm, mm, I think I think maybe just doing a straight up attack and then using Alyssa's at will that is a guaranteed damage is probably the safer bet here. So I think let's try that. Uh, so we're still gonna do trapping strike, despite the fact that we're not actually using the trapping part of it, but it is plus eight. So here we go. Gotta roll 12 or higher. No, we don't roll 12 or higher, what am I doing? Okay, <laughs> good. Anyway, it doesn't really matter because he hits for sure. So that's one damage on our club-wielding friend here. Uh, and that's Arjan's entire hero phase. Problem is, we're not standing next to an unexplored edge, so we have to pull an encounter for our exploration phase. This could get messy. We gotta do it. We're playing by the rules. We gotta do it. And no, we don't have enough XP to cancel it. Uh, yeah, get all 18, Arjan. I hold in my hand the encounter. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, your hero takes one damage for each treasure card you control, unless you discard one treasure, uh, one item treasure card. He's got two... He could take the hits, but he's got the healing potion and the wand of magic missiles. I don't need that wand of magic missiles. I'm a fighter. I don't need that. What is this? This glowing stick. I don't need that. Nah, forget it. This this wand of magic missiles. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I knew I was going to do that eventually. Uh, there we go. This wand of magic missiles is not. That's This is the cursed item that we are now um, chucking down a hole. <laughs> Goodbye, Wanted Magic Missiles.
So no damage. And uh, so that was okay. That encounter was okay. All it did was was make us lose a, a wand we didn't really want anyway. Um, actually, the wand was pretty good. It, it was a guaranteed damage without a roll. But anyway, you know, I'd rather that than take two damage. Um, so that's it. We're good. So now it's Alyssa's turn. Uh, so I think the call here is... Whew. So... We still want to explore an edge. That's always, always the name of the game is always explore an edge if you can. So she can do her uh, careful attack, kill this guy, and then go around, go one, two, three, and be on this edge here. Or she can go over here um, because, you know, adjacent to the knoll isn't a bad thing either because he's a ranged attack, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, that's probably the, the the play, right? I'm thinking, I'm thinking we'll go to this edge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, Jesus, I wondered what that smell was. See, he's a lizard, so it would smell like chicken, you know? <laughs> uh, Okay. All right, so I, I'm, I'm going to call it. I'm going to say that's the play. We do our, um, what's it called? Careful attack on this guy. Kill him. Um, and he is worth 3 XP. So that means we've got enough to cancel an encounter. Finally. Um, yeah, that's there's too many positives to this to not do it this way. So let's do it that way. We use our careful attack which does one guaranteed damage to an adjacent monster on this dude. So the Earth Cultist has been destroyed. So he is worth three XP. That goes in our XP pool. Alyssa gets a treasure. And the treasure is Breath of Life. Play this fortune immediately. Hero gains one hit point. Yay! That's, that's real good. We're happy about that. So there we go. Alyssa gets healed one hit point. That gets discarded. And now she can do her second action, which is going to be to move one, two, three. This edge is the end of her hero phase. Now the beginning of the exploration phase. We pull a tile. <sighs> again, again with the encounters and the traps. So we've got an encounter and four traps. But no monsters. Okay. All right. Whatever. Put out the traps. Um, and the good thing is we, we don't actually have to go this way, right? Like we, we can go this way as well. Um, yeah, no, that, is, that, was, that was a really good play. See, again, occasionally things will happen. They're like, oh, that's a... a a, a not terrible <laughs> thing to happen. Things can turn on a dime. That's that's the fun part of these games. Anyway, so we are going to pull an encounter. The good news is we can cancel that encounter. We have enough XP to do that. So let's get the encounter out. Now we are in the villain phase. And... Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll be canceling this i think thundering boomerang the cultists of the howling hatred are deadly accurate in with their boomerangs <laughs> okay that's a big cultist thing attack your hero twice plus seven one damage so she could potentially get two more damage um which would put her back down to one hit point i think we gotta cancel this one so three four, five. So we're back down to one hit point, but this never happens. Australian cultists, exactly. Um, okay. So that is Herlissa's villain phase. That's her whole turn done. So now we're on to Arjan. Arjan, my man, my dude. You, 
Hmm. So, I mean, obviously we can attack Firebat. Sure. Um, the Null has two hit points. The Firebat has one hit point. So, I can kill the Firebat outright right now, which is probably the play. And then have to deal with the Null. But by the time we're dealing with... I mean, the Null is going to activate... Uh, oh, I apologize. I missed a whole step here. We are not done. <laughs> we are not done with Alyssa's turn. Because on Alyssa's villain phase, all the monsters that she controls activates. So, okay, Arjan hasn't done anything yet. We are still in Alyssa's villain phase. So the bat and the archer are going to are going to activate now. So my apologies. That was, that was a bit of an oops, but I caught it. Um, you know, I've had half a pint of Guinness. Whatever. I'm going to have some more. <laughs> uh, so. The first one that's going to activate is the Fire Bat. The Fire Bat is obviously adjacent to Arjan. So it's going to attack him. It's going to attack with a plus five. If it hits, it does one damage. Arjan has AC 17. Nope. It misses. That's excellent. And the Null Archer is going to attack um, Arjan. John? Is our John? Well, hang on. No, we've got some AI here to deal with. So it's the hero, the closest hero uh, within two tiles has the fewest hit points remaining. So he's going to attack Alyssa. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Finally, the tank is tanking, right? Um,. Hmm. So yeah, he's going to attack Alyssa with a plus seven. Oof. Oof. Oh, he just misses. Yes. <laughs> Finally, some good rolls. Okay, so the null misses. That is now Alyssa's whole turn is done. Now Arjan can activate. He's going to attack the Firebat with Trapping Strike, so that's plus 8. Firebat's AC is 14. Oh yeah. <laughs> there we go, Mr. 18 again. I promise the dice isn't loaded, die isn't loaded. If it were, I'd be rolling better. Um, so there we go, he hits the Firebat, Firebat is done. Firebat is worth 1 XP, it goes into our XP pool and Arjan gets a treasure. Another potion of healing! Aha! That is a good thing. It is the same kind. They're called different things. I did uh, combine a couple of different games worth of stuff here. Um, I did look at them and I carefully chose which ones were appropriate, so they should all work just fine. Yeah, it is the same thing. Okay, so he's got... Except for this one's worth 600 gold and the other one is worth 300 gold, but they both are the same thing. Anyway, <laughs> well, I'll just go with what the card says, you know, that's fine. Um, oh, we should probably take the fire bat off the table. And that's it. So that was his attack. He can now move. So he's probably going to do that so we can explore this edge here. We're getting, we're getting into some interesting spatial situations here let me see how's this can we do this are we good here that looks okay that looks all right so arjan is going to move five one two three four five he's got hey hey no you get it no it's it's not much taller than no uh and that's his second action he's going to now explore that edge. Hey, well, I mean, it's not great, but it's no encounter and two monsters. Okay, so let's move these guys aside here. And finally, Arjan gets to control some monsters. And he gets to control two monsters. And the monsters are... <laughs> Another Earth Cultist. I don't like these guys. They're heavy hitters. And a Cobalt Skirmisher. 
That's, look at that, attack plus nine. I mean, he's, he's got 13 AC, so he's, he's, you know, he's glass, but a plus nine on attack, jeez. Okay, where are my kobolds? They're little, so they're easy to miss. Those are goblins, those aren't kobolds. Those are doppelgangers. I swear I've got they're here somewhere, they have to be. Oh here we are. They're not they're not green. That's that was what was throwing me. Here's our cobalt skirmisher. Right there. Okay. <laughs> it's the cobalt cobalt, yeah. I should do that. If I if I do paint these minis, I'll paint all of the bases of all of the cobalts blue. How's that? All right, Jamie. Since you're since you're around, um, tell me how the, the level of the music is. Like, first of all, can you hear it? Do, can you tell that there's music? And and if so, is it too loud or is it not loud enough? Let me know, because I'm not I'm not wearing headphones, so I can only look at the meter and kind of go. That looks okay, but I'm not sh uh, absolutely sure. All right, so there we go. There's our monsters have spawned. So now they will activate the Earth Cultist. Yeah, well, the, yeah, the music is, is um, the levels aren't equalized, I think, between the files. I can actually, I can actually pull it up a little bit here. I don't want it too loud, actually. I, what I have to do is set up proper audio ducking, so when I talk, the music goes down, but that's, I didn't have time for that today. Um, anyway, we're, we're activating... Uh, Arjan's monsters. So the first one is the Earth Cultist. If the Earth Cultist is within one tile of a hero and was adjacent to the closest hero and attacks the hero with a stone club. So he is going to move adjacent to Arjan and try and hit the lizard with his stick. With his lizard hitting stick. So it's plus seven. If he hits, he does two damage. That's not great. Um, but Arjona has 17 AC, so he's got to roll 10 or higher. Aha! Excellent. He only rolls a five, so he misses. That's the Earth Cultist, the Kobold Skirmisher. Um, it moves adjacent to the closest hero. Oh, no, it doesn't move adjacent. That's actually a Javelin. The kobold is within one tile of the hero and attacks the closest hero with a thrown javelin. Okay. So this is this dude's got a ranged attack. Alright. So he's gonna plus nine. Aha. Misses. They both miss. That's the best kind of roll. So that's Arjan's turn. Done. Uh, now we are on to Alyssa, her hero phase. So she is going to... Hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, yeah, Arjun's getting it full in the face here. Hey, you know, Alyssa's like, hey, I already died once. I mean, what do you want? You know, we didn't come here to not face monsters. Um... So she, I mean, the only thing she really can do, huh, she can use her longbow. That only does one damage. Hmm. Now let's see, hang on. Again, we're, we're trying to plan ahead to explore an edge, right? So, unfortunately, the edge we're going to have to explore is this one, so I'm going to have to move, push the whole map up. Uh, but, oh no, she's not going to be able to kill that guy on this round. So no matter what, she can't get to an unexplored edge. So we're going to have to face an encounter no matter what. So she might as well move and do her careful attack, which is a guaranteed damage on the null. Uh, and that's it for her hero phase. So that's what she's gonna do. She's gonna move adjacent to the null, do her careful attack, which we do not roll for. 
And the Knoll has one damage on him. Now, <laughs> now is the fun part. Because we're not exploring an edge. So we gotta pull an encounter. And then the monsters that she controls, which in this case is just the Null Archer. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's let's have a let's have it. Oh, it just it's a little humid in the cave, and you're slightly uncomfortable. Let's have that kind of event. Uh, okay, this isn't so bad. <laughs> I get back and now I'm pulling the the encounter cards and looking at them first before I'm letting the camera see them. <laughs> Uh, this isn't so bad. Prowling Spirits, you must discard one of your treasure cards of your choice. Well, Alyssa only has one treasure card, and that is, unfortunately, a very cool one. She has these Claws of the Umber Hulk, which do three damage. Now, I, I want to make a judgment, a rule judgment here. So... This is this is the thing about uh, treasures are all of these gold tokens. You can see here in the lower camera there, all of these gold tokens were initially a treasure card. And then you just use the tokens to like, so you can just discard the, the treasure card. I don't know if the rules state that these still count as a treasure card. So could I just throw away one of these and fulfill the terms of this event and then keep my Claws of the Umber Hulk? Because <laughs> I really want the Claws of the Umber Hulk because uh, they do high damage and we're going to get into a, a state where we're going to need that high damage if we get to the end of this dungeon. So I say let's be kind to ourselves. Let's, let's let the adventure continue because we're streaming and recording we want it to keep going right so let's do that let's say yes these do count as treasure cards we will discard 100 gold and we get to keep our claws of the umber hulk and we have fulfilled the terms of the event it might seem a bit cheating i think i think we're okay i think we're still within the rules of fairness if we had kept the card instead of trading the card for the token it would still be a card so I'm 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 comfortable with the morality of this choice I think we're okay so there the event is done um and that's it that's her oh no that's not it the null archer has to attack now so he's going to attack the hero with the least Hit points remaining. That is Alyssa. <sighs> so, here we go. You ready? Alyssa's got 15 AC. This is a plus 7. <sighs> it hits. It hits and it does 1 damage. So that is it. Now that is it for Alyssa's whole turn. Now our Jean gets to go. Hmm. Hmm. So here's where things get interesting because let's look at the rules for Cleave. Attack one adjacent monster on your tile. Or attack one adjacent monster. If you hit, choose another monster on your tile and move adjacent to it. That monster takes one damage for sure. Don't have to roll for it. So, the Null Archer is on Arjun's tile. So if I attack the uh, Earth Cultist and hit, I still won't kill him because he's got two hit points, but... That means if I hit him, I can then attack the Null Archer, do a guaranteed damage, and kill the Null Archer. That seems like the play to me here. So let's try that. So you see, here's the 
sorry. <laughs> here's the Earth Cultist. Here's the Null Archer. The Null Archer and Arjan are on the same tile. Arjan and the Earth Cultist are not on the same tile. So if he attacks the Earth Cultist and hits, then he can do one damage to the Null because he is adjacent. He's on the same tile and kill the Null Archer for sure. So let's give that a shot. So this is only a plus six and he has to hit... He has to hit AC 16, so we gotta roll 10 or higher. Let's hope. Cross whatever you can cross. Here. For luck. Alright. <laughs> Thank you, Pepster. It's, uh, it was a lot of work and not a small amount of financial investment <laughs> to, to get to this point, so... Thank you, thank you for thank you for joining as well. You uh, always a friendly face. Okay, anyway, we gotta roll this this die that I've been trying to roll for at least thirty seconds now. I'm not I'm not looking I'm not looking. Yo, oh, it's off camera. You can't see it. Ha ha. <laughs> we got him. Okay, so that means we just trade this damage token to. The Earth Cultist. The Earth Cultist has one damage. Let's make sure the Earth Cultist... Yeah, the Earth Cultist has two hit points, so... <sighs> okay, the Earth Cultist takes a damage. Then we use our Cleave on the Null Archer. The Null Archer has been defeated. Sorry, Null. I can't... I can't do Null. Jamie is... Jamie is Null. If Jamie was on Skype, he'd be doing Null right now, I guarantee you. Um... So our Null Archer here is worth 2 XP. That goes into our XP pool. So we have 4 XP total. We still have enough to uh, cancel an encounter, but yeah, that was <laughs> that was a real that was a real squeaker. Um, okay. Oh, we need a treasure. We need a treasure. I almost I always forget treasure. When I was when I was doing the first test recording for this rig that never worked out because I messed up the audio. Um, I actually forgot to ro to pick up treasure for the entire game. <laughs> like, and, you know, that seems like, no know what, I, I lost. Surprise, surprise. Um, oh, nice. Okay, here we go. Check this out. Here's the treasure. It's a fortune. Quick strike. Play immediately. Choose one hero. That hero immediately uses an attack power. <laughs> so, um... Oh, you know, if only... If only Alyssa was adjacent, she could use her uh, careful attack and definitely kill the, um, the Earth Cultist, but she's not adjacent, so... That's a, that's not the choice, but but nevertheless, I'm gonna just make sure that this is yeah, that's a treasure. That's a treasure. Um, so now we discard this. So now somebody can do an attack action. So our choices are uh, Alyssa can do an attack with a longbow. That's a plus eight, and then it'll do one damage, and that will kill the cultist. Or um, Arjan can do his trapping strike. That's also a plus eight, and do one damage. So. It doesn't really matter who. Um, I think Arjan has earned it. <laughs> I think that Arjan will take his, excuse me, trapping strike, and we'll see what we can do here. Yeah, of course, of course, it's an eighteen. <laughs> so yes, Arjan hits the Earth Cultist. Earth Cultist. Goes in the deep six. Uh, and we get... Where is the Earth Cultist? Here we go. Hello, James. That's James the cat is meowing outside the door here. Do you want to come in and be an internet superstar? I think, I think he's being shy. Um, anyway, so we've killed the Earth Cultist. Three XP! That's awesome. Um, however, we do not get a treasure because um, on your round, this is one of the rules, on your round, like, er 
every round you can only draw one treasure, even if you kill multiple monsters. That is a rule. So um, we don't get another treasure, unfortunately, but that was fantastic. That was a great round. Uh, and we can cancel an encounter should we require it. Um, so that is great. Now, I've lost track. I think that was Arjan's first action. Yeah, it was his Arjan's first action. So he has another action. He can move uh, and, and explore an edge. So, I mean, we actually have a couple of choices here. I'm going to explore this way just because this is where the table space is. So let's do Arjan's move, which is five, one, two, three. That's it. He's going to explore an edge. Fire altar. That fire altar doesn't mean anything for this adventure. That's a different adventure. But no encounter two monsters. Okay. So that's the exploration phase. We'll pull uh, two monsters that Arjan will control. And our first monster is... Oh, okay. An orc archer. Let me find him. Where's our orcs? Orcs? Who brought orcs in here? That's not an orc archer. No, that is an orc archer. Okay. Uh, let's say he's here. And our second monster is another orc archer. This is where the orcs are hanging out. It's orc land. That's uh, that's actually quite a nice <laughs> like symmetry there. I like that. They're just, they're just kind of hanging out, waiting. Um, and Arjan also controls them. So now that we're on to Arjan's villain phase, all of these monsters are going to activate in turn. So the first is the Kobold Skirmisher. Uh, he's going to throw his javelin. Uh, yeah, the closest hero, which obviously in this case is Arjan. There are less doppelgangers. Yes, I made made sure of that. I mean, the monster deck, since I mixed in all of the appropriate monsters from the other games, just let me show. The monster deck for this game out of the box was about that thick. Our monster deck now is that thick. <laughs> so uh, we have a lot more variety to choose from. Uh, I thought that was nicer and also fewer doppelgangers. So our kobold is going to attack Arjan with a plus nine. So that's nasty. Plus nine. Plus nine is not good. Arjan has a AC 17. Okay, so we just miss. That's good. That is good. Um, so that's the Cobalt Skirmisher. Now the Orc Archer goes. Ooh. Oh, he's got some weird stuff. He has some very weird stuff. So let's have a look at this. I think these guys are only worth one XP. I think that's probably... These guys are from a different game, so it's balanced a little bit differently, so... Huh, that may have been a mistake. Let's see. If the Orc Archer is adjacent to a hero, it attacks the hero with a punch. Okay, these guys have both a melee and a range attack. That is why there's a whole lot of... That's why there's a grid here, see? If the Orc Archer is within two tiles of a hero, so neither of them are adjacent, so we're going to the within two tiles, it attacks the closest hero with an arrow. Um, so the arrow is plus six, does two damage if it hits, one damage if it misses. So one of those... Magic arrows that always does damage, even if it misses. Okay. Thankfully, it's only a plus six, so... Oi. <laughs> um, the question arises here. Do these guys have line of sight? Line of sight is a thing we do have to take into account. Um, because they are in a corner here. Sorry. <laughs> because they are in a corner. They are both in a corner. Um... 
So there's a there's a, a simple rule that is actually from a different game, but I it, it works really well for these grid-based things. Um, and that is, and this is where I get to show off a toy. This this looks looks like a laser pointer, right? It's such a simple idea. You'd think somebody had done it before. But it doesn't make a point. It makes a line. So it's fantastic to use on these kind of miniature wargaming things to trace line of sight. So the rule is if you take one corner of the square of your attacker and can draw a direct line, a direct uninterrupted line, to two points on the square that the target uh, is occupying, then they have line of sight. So in this case, we can draw from that corner to that corner and from that corner to that corner uninterrupted. So yeah, he's got line of sight. This guy, we have to go from there, but that is legal. And there, and that is also legal. So yes, they have line of sight. This is so cool. I love this thing. Because there's no guesswork, right? You just you have, you literally have a laser sight uh, that you're putting on the board, and that's really kind of cool. Um, yeah, I know, really, right? Like missing on a, on an arrow shot, you miss. I guess I don't know. The arrow shatters, and then you get shrapnel. I don't know. It seems wrong. Um, <laughs> but anyway, that's that's the reality of where we are. So. Uh, this is the first orc archer that we drew, so he's going to go first. And it's plus six, so he has to roll 11 or higher. Oh yeah. So there's two more damage for Arjan. So Arjan is at five. So thankfully he's a tough lizard, he's got 10 hit points, so he's only at half health, still. And our other orc archer will now attack. And he misses. So he still does one damage. And that is the villain phase for Arjan. So he's done. So now we're on to Alyssa's turn. <sighs> so let's see. We want to explore an edge. We also have a number of monsters to deal with. That kobold has low AC and one hit point. So I can move to this edge, which means I'm adjacent, and use my careful attack, which will definitely kill him, and we can explore an edge. So I think that's the play here. Unfortunately, we're getting we're getting into some space restrictions here. Let me see if I can move things around enough to yeah that looks okay all right we're good so she's going to move one two three four five that is her her speed is actually six so she could move one more uh and she will use her careful attack on the kobold kobold i mean the careful attack doesn't have to roll so it's a guaranteed one damage kobold only has one hit point kobold is defeated um kobold is worth one XP goes into our XP pool. So we're actually okay for XP. We've got five, six, seven, eight. We've got eight XP. That's okay. Um, and oh, also treasure. See, I always forget treasure. What treasure do we have? Interesting. Ring of the Ram. Use instead of an attack action. Your hero may disable one trap token on his or her tile. Attack one monster on your hero's tile. If the, so you can do both of these things? Okay. This seems overpowered, but I'll take it. <laughs> attack one monster on your hero's tile. If the attack hits, move the monster to tiles. <laughs> Uh, if that attack hits, a plus five, well, it's a plus five, so it doesn't have a high uh, chance of hitting, but it, does, it still does one damage if it misses. That seems overpowered, but okay. <laughs> we'll take it. 
Um, that's real good. So Alyssa's got a really cool ring now. So now we are exploring this edge here. Dungeon tile. Okay. Believe it or not, this is it. This is the the big uh, event. So that's going to go that way. So we've revealed the air altar. Now I think I have to... This is actually going to work out because we can push all this up here. Um, so I have to do a thing now. We've actually hit the crucial point. So let me see here. <sighs> da, 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 da. When a hero reveals the air altar tile, read the following. These elemental fanatics... Uh, yeah, boss fight with Yard Trash. Yes, Jamie, you are correct. <laughs> um, these elemental fanatics uh, have many allies, and those who call themselves uh, the Cult of Howling Hatred have been especially numerous. You have finally reached a group of cells, the bars of which consist of fused coral, iron, and stone. None are occupied, but the door to one stands open. The former occupant looks to have been a brass dragon wormling which is currently menaced by a howling air elemental behind an altar sculpted to resemble the furious wind spirits. Ha! <sighs> okay, then, instead of drawing monster cards for the tile, uh, the active player takes the air elemental villain card. Let me show you that. Because it's one of these, it's a big one, it's, it's one of these ones. Uh, level 5 villain, that's right. You read that right. Uh, and places the air elemental figure on the air altar tile. And um, here's, here's the air elemental figure. He's not small. He's kind of big. He's, he's kind of sort of big like big <laughs> uh -huh. um, as a villain the air elemental acts on the start of each player's villain phase so he goes every round doesn't matter who controls him um, Place the elemental air node tile next to the closest unexplored edge of the air tile. That is, I, I thought I prepped everything. I forgot to pull out that one tile. Give me one second. I knew I forgot one, one major thing. Uh, okay, good. There it is. It's right here. I don't think that we're going to need any more monsters, but let me just keep them handy in case. So... Um, let me just read this again here. Place the elemental air node tile next to the closest unexplored edge of the air altar tile. So, I guess that means like this. Okay, we've got that. Yep. Um, place the Mikazi token on any square of the elemental air node depicted on the node sets, any of these. Let me just show you. So we're, we're, what we've done is we've revealed the uh, prison and the prison is being guarded by this boss and the prison is holding this character as a prisoner. It's a little brass dragon wormling now i'm i'm pronouncing that as my i who knows if that's correct um nevertheless my has this little token here that goes on one of these squares right here so that they represent the character that we have uh, come to rescue so we found the prison we found the prisoner and we found the thing guarding the prisoner Um, so we'll notice, uh, if Mikazi is on the start tile, he or she escapes the dungeon. She, sorry, escapes the dungeon. Um, so that's good. That's what we want to happen. Otherwise, Mikazi moves 
uh, one tile towards the start tile, pass this card two players to the left. So I had to look this up earlier because I wasn't sure how to interpret this if you are if you have less than three players um, or solo as the case may be. So it seems to me that I didn't couldn't find an answer for this. I looked on Board Game Geek. I looked for FAQs about like what happens if you can't pass it two players to the left. Um, it it seems to me that what all that means is that this character moves every other turn, right? That seems like it makes sense um, because you're just if you're passing to the second player to the left, it means that the, the player after you goes. And then the player with Misaki goes. So then Misaki activates. So it's just that Misaki is activating every other turn. Misaki does not activate every turn. Misaki activates every other turn. Um, so that's the way I'm going to play it. I'm just going to have Misaki be controlled by, I guess in this case, Alyssa. And uh, Misaki will activate whenever Alyssa activates. That makes sense. I think. I think that's fair. So... Uh, that's the thing. So what's going to happen is every time Alyssa's, uh, Alyssa activates, Saki is going to move uh, one tile, is it? Yes, one tile towards the start tile. And if Misaki can make it from here to here, um, then Misaki has escaped. And that's a good thing. We want that to happen. If Misaki gets killed, because Misaki uh, acts like a... Um, is treated as a hero for the purposes of villains, so monsters will attack her. Um, uh, if she is killed, we don't lose, but we get a bonus if she lives. That's what it comes down to. So there we go. There's our setup for what happens now. <laughs> oh, so, okay, Misaki is controlled by Alyssa, so we'll put Misaki here with Alyssa. Um, and we've got our big crazy ass I've never I've never played solo a villain yet so um, this is a first for me so let's see because that's what's gonna happen now <laughs> uh, Alyssa doesn't control any other monsters right no she does not okay so as we can see yes see this is why I wanted to hang on to the umberhole clause because high damage this dude's got 10 hit points that's a lot so we definitely want to um to show him what's what so Alyssa is going to so she's she's done her hero phase she did exploration phase on her exploration phase all of this stuff was revealed now we go into the villain phase which means our air elemental activates <sighs> If the air elemental is on a tile with a hero, that's not the case. So we can move to the next thing. If the air elemental is within two tiles of a hero, it moves one tile towards the closest hero and attacks the hero with the most hit points within one tile with a blast of wind. So that's interesting. It's actually going to attack... It's actually going to move to this tile and attack... Arjan. Uh, yes, this is where we this is where we just use everything, right? This is where we just like pull out all the stops and uh, and uh, really really go for broke. So it's here now. It's going to attack Arjan, and the attack is blast of wind plus seven does one damage. Oh, well that's not so bad okay he doesn't actually do that much damage that's good um oh i see what his special thing is it's the first one if he's on a tile with a hero it attacks each hero on that tile with the whirlwind hit or miss move each attacked hero one tile away from the air elemental and that includes misaki and it doesn't say what direction we should move them. So it could just keep blowing them towards <laughs> the entrance. I think we may win this. Um, I think we may win this. 
uh, the so one of the rules uh, that isn't stated outright, but is is kind of like an accepted house rule is if you ever have a monster that has a power like this, that there are a whole bunch of monsters like trolls can like hit and bash in a direction. You the direction that you pick. Um, yeah, exactly. The direction that you pick is wherever the arrow of the tile is pointing. That makes sense. And if you notice, you go to the camera view here, the arrows are all <laughs> pointing towards the start tile. So even following the rule, we're still getting blown towards the door, um, which is great. So really all we have to do is like, well, I think we have to, I think we have to defeat the air elemental to win victory. Heroes win the adventure when they defeat the air elemental. So yes, in order to win this, we have to kill the air elemental. But um, I think Masaki has a good chance of surviving <laughs> because as long as we can get him, her, sorry, to uh, to that tile. Oh, how many hit points does Masaki have? Three. So we probably don't want <laughs> the air elemental to hit her. <laughs> But, nevertheless, um, you know, she could take one hit and then get blown a tile away, and that's fine. That would be okay. Uh, at any rate, so what's going to happen now is the air elemental has moved. It's going to attack Arjan with a blast of wind. So it's going to attack with a plus seven. If it hits, it does one damage. So it has to roll ten or higher. It rolls a nine. It misses. That's great. Um, so we're still on uh, Alyssa's turn. I'm going to say for the sake of fairness that um, Misaki will activate on the hero phase of the hero controlling her. So this is not the hero phase. I mean, because we just revealed her, right? So I don't think she would move in this round. I think she'll move on Alyssa's next turn. So that's that's fair. Um so that is it for Alyssa's turn. Now it's her Jean's turn. Whew. <laughs> well, um, he is adjacent to the uh, air elemental. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I'm looking at his fancy pants abilities here. The problem with his fancy pants abilities is they are both low plus to hit. Oh, you know what? Maybe we'll just do this because who controls the orcs? He does. I don't... This, this is a tough call. Like, should we deal with the orcs or... Because that air elemental is going to uh, activate again this round. And he's going to attack Arjan. Um, and he gets to use his fancy, I'm going to, I'm going to blow you guys around. Yeah, yeah, see, so here, and here's the thing, Arjan has his daily Brute Strike, uh, which does four if he hits, and we don't, we don't expend it if he misses so we can use it again. <laughs> yeah. Forget the orcs. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe that's the call. Maybe focus on... Well, this is the thing. This goes against my MMO instincts because every time in an MMO it's like, take out the yard trash first before you take out the elite. Right? So... But maybe in this case... Um, maybe in this case the opposite is true. The funny thing is, if uh, uh, the um, elemental attacks and does his blowing them around uh, attack, it means he's going to push them out of line of sight of the orcs. <laughs> so they, the orcs will have to move before they can attack. <laughs> Which strikes me as a good thing. Um, except for the orcs will get to attack this round. We can't... We can't move and attack the orcs, I think you're right. Now, the other thing we have to remember is um, not exploring an edge means we get an encounter. That still, that rule still is in effect as we're doing this. So, we're still not at uh, home and dry. But, I think the call here is we do 
we do the brute strike, see if we can get a bunch of damage on that air elemental, and then deal with whatever happens after that. So, here we go. This is a plus five. The air elemental has, oh, the air elemental's only 10 AC. Y yes, this place is cursed. It's the temple of elemental evil. What did you think was gonna happen here? Carnival rides and candy floss? No, this is like, this is where the monsters and stuff are. <laughs> so, okay, this is good. So he only has to roll five or above. I think we can probably do that. Watch this happen now. This is, this is not a cursed dice. This is a good karma die. This is this is the uh, the dice bar die that goes to help at risk queer youth. So so this is this is charity die here. This is got a lot of good karma in it. So we'll there. You see there we go. Right on, Arjan, Mister Eighteen. <laughs> That's great. That is real good. We are happy about that. So right away, crack the air elemental. Oops, I just dumped a bunch of traps all over the place. That's okay, we're not gonna be using these anyway. So the air elemental now has four damage. That's real good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So now, of course, we have, since the Brute Strike did work, we have to flip it over. We can't use it again. But that was still worth it because it, it hit. It did solid damage. And so now Arjan can move. And Arjan is going to do that. He's going to move towards the start pile. I think that's the logical thing here. We're trying to escort the Mizaki out. So we're going to like, you know, set up a, we're going to clear the path, right? So he's going to move, what's his speed? Five. One, two, three, four, five. And also you'll notice, get out of line of sight of the orcs. Uh, speaking of the orcs. Now this is real interesting because the air elemental is technically blocking is he blocking line of sight let's get our fancy laser out and see he can draw a line to that corner and now this orc so this orc can attack this orc can't because he can only draw one line to her square and he cannot draw. Let's see, so one orc can attack Alyssa. Uh, yes, that is true. That's true. Hopefully, he will. He will chase. Um, but we have to deal with the orc archers first. And the first one is this guy. He has line of sight. The other guy doesn't. So that means that the first orc will attack Alyssa with an arrow. So she's going to get another damage no matter what because this is that crazy arrow if it misses it still hits thing um he attacks with plus six. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so i think he hit that's two for Alyssa. five six seven eight that's it she goes down again oof Okay, it's all right, it's all right. We have two more healing surges. We're still not done yet. Um, so Alyssa goes down. The other orc does not have line of sight. So that means that he moves one tile towards the closest hero, which in Alyssa does not count anymore. I now really, thankfully monsters don't crit. There, I don't think there is a crit in this game actually. Maybe there is, but it's only for heroes. I don't remember. <laughs> but I know it's not for monsters. I know that for sure. Um, if we if we happen to roll a natural 20 for one of the heroes, I'll look it up. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, but anyway, so he has to move one tile towards the closest hero, which is Arjan. So he's just going to move to this tile. And that's it. That's his whole turn. 
So that was our Jean's uh, round. So now, now it's Alyssa. Poor Alyssa, we have to spend. Hey, Arjan, you should like use one of the two healing potions you have, or hey, maybe both. Let's spend another healing surge and pick Alyssa back up. So that's her. Um, that's one action. She gets to do another action. She can't attack. She can't move um, because both. Well, I guess she can. She can go one two, three, four, five, six, so she can get, like, there. Um, but that's it. Hmm. Hmm. So, I mean, well, maybe this is the time to use the Claws of the Umber Hulk. <laughs> maybe. Maybe this is a good time for that. Um. Why not, huh? And the interesting thing about the Claws of the Umber Hulk are that it doesn't say to exhaust it. It doesn't say to discard it. You can just use this. <laughs> now, of course, it's only a plus four. So there's the trade-off. But I don't know. I'm thinking... Claws of, the, claws of the Umber Hulk on the Air Elemental. And that will get the Air Elemental down to a significant uh, point, because it's already got four. So another three, that's seven, that means it will only have three hit points left. That's okay. So, come on, Alyssa. Now is the time to roll high. Yeah, they seem a little overpowered, but remember, it is only a plus four, which is not much. Yeah, exactly. This is this is a good uh, boss to use the claws on. Other bosses have way more AC than this. Remember, this is only the second adventure in the campaign, so the boss is still not going to be, like, crazy powerful. Okay, anyway, here we go. Roll high, roll high, roll high. Ten. That's it. We hit. We hit. That's fourteen. It only has 10 AC. We hit. Nice. Um, so, that's 7 damage on the air elemental. And it is hurting. Um, so, this is still Alyssa's hero phase. That was her first action. She gets to take another action. She can move, but where is she going to move to? Um... One, two, three, four, five, six. She can move to there. Which is probably a good idea. We want to stay off of the tile uh, with the air elemental. So let's do that. And there is Alyssa's actions. Now Masaki has to go because she is... Uh, on Alyssa's turn. So she is going to move one tile towards the start tile. So she's on this. So I wonder, <laughs> I wonder which way she'd go. You think she'd go this way and this way or this way and this way? I think she'd go this way. Right? And then up and then through. Yeah. Okay. So Zaki is gone. So now we are on the villain phase. And because the air elemental attacks every round, no matter who controls it, the air elemental is going to activate. Um, moves one tile towards the closest hero and attacks that hero with the most hit points with a blast of wind. Okay, so that means it's going to move. <laughs> it can't fit anywhere. Uh, oh, yes, it can. Okay, it can move here. And it's going to attack Arshan. With its blast of wind, which is plus seven, does one damage if it hits. So it's got to roll ten or higher. Oh yeah, it hits. One more damage for Arjan. That's okay though. Arjan is a tough lizard. He can take it. 
Um, oh, we gotta put Alyssa back at four hit points because her healing surge. There we go. Uh, and that's the villain phase for Alyssa done. So now we are on Arjan's turn. What is the most damage Arjan can do? <laughs> Not much. Actually, all of his skills he has left, so he's got Trapping Strike, which does one damage, Cleave, which does one damage, Dragon's Breath, uh, which does one damage but attacks multiple monsters on his tile, but there is only one monster on his tile. And then I have this Utility Power, um, which might not be a bad thing to use right now, sorry, right now, uh, which is Unstoppable. Use this at the start of your hero phase, you regain two hit points. It's just a heal. Um, which maybe we should use. That would be an action, though. Oh, that's fine. You know what? That's what he's going to do. He's going to use his utility power and uh, heal two hit points. So, there we go. And he's going to attack. He's not going to move uh, this round. You know what? I just realized we didn't explore an edge on Alyssa's turn. <sighs> we should have pulled an encounter. Um, in the interest of fairness, let's say that we did and we cancelled it and we will spend 5 XP right now uh, to make up for the thing that I missed. So, now we do have to pull an encounter uh, that we can't cancel, but Dems the rules, right? That's how it works. <laughs> Oops. Uh, it could have been a good encounter too. Well, I guess we'll find out what the encounter was going to be because we have to pull it now. Um, so, okay, Arjan has done his attack. Or no, he's done his utility. He's healed. Now he's going to attack. He's going to attack the air elemental. Uh, here we are with his trapping strike. He can only do one damage, but you know, yeah, get too bad the wand is gone. The wand would be good. Um, this is plus eight. And he only has to hit AC 10. Guess what? Yeah, he has another damage for our air elemental. Our air elemental only has two hit points left. That's real good. But since we're not moving, we're not exploring an edge, now we have to pull an encounter for the exploration phase. And the encounter is... Oh, this is a really interesting one. Rage of Imix. Place a Rage of Imix token on your hero's tile. Each hero on a tile with a Rage of Imix token takes two damage. So I guess it's a good thing that we healed those two <laughs> damage because we just took them again, both Arjan and Alyssa. So here's the Rage of Imix token. We are placing that on the tile. And Alyssa and Arjan both take two damage. Alyssa, one, two, three, four, five, six. So she is hurting again it's all right it's all right we st we're not out of it yet <laughs> yeah that is a real jerk event um but nevertheless it's done now it's done um and that's it that is arjun's turn he controls the orcs. Why did the orcs go last round? Maybe the orcs didn't go last round. That's it. The orcs didn't go last round. They go this round. I'm a little sleeped up, so it's okay. I'm fine. I will lose the plot every now and then, but we'll pick it up again. So now the orcs do go. Um, so the first orc, which is this guy, uh, he is not within line of sight. He is not within a tile, so he's going to move one tile. That's all he can do. This guy, however, uh, he can draw a line from there to there, and there to there, so he does have line of sight on Alyssa. Oh boy, so if he hits, 
She goes down again. We do have one last healing surge. But, uh... Oh boy. <laughs> okay, this is on plus six. Oh yeah, he hits. He hits. So Alyssa is down again. Um, and that's that. That orc has attacked, so that's his turn. And now we're on to Alyssa's turn. <laughs> Ho is going to spend our final healing surge. This is it. Nobody can go down again. This is it. You listening, Alyssa? You're back up at four hit points. You cannot die again. This is important. You are going to go as near as you can to the lizard, and he is going to give you healing potions. And this is important. Are you listening? <sighs> okay, so she is up. That's an action. Um, so she can attack? Uh, the problem here, of course, is that both of those orcs have her in line of sight. So she's going to want to get the heck out of there. Can she? She can move through Arjan, so we can go one, two, three, four, five, six. So we can. We can get here. That will get me out of range of the orcs, and then I can use my attack on uh, or my um my longbow on the air elemental it won't kill him if i hit but it will get him real close it will get him within a hit point of going down that means we will get an event though because i'm not exploring an edge and we can't cancel it <laughs> okay this is it this is where this is where it comes down to it um this is where we may lose this is this is entirely within the realm of possibility, but I think that's what we got to do. So she's going to move, then she's going to attack, and I mean she's obviously she has to attack the air elemental. It's the only thing she can attack, um, or she can move and move, which doesn't make any sense. It doesn't help anybody because we're still going to get uh, an encounter if she moves and moves. So she's going to shoot her longbow. Um, hang on, does she have any? Fancy pants thing to do here. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that's exactly it. We are going to get an event no matter what. But here, here's where it gets really interesting. Check this out. Here is Alyssa's daily. Split the tree. Choose a tile within two tiles of you. Attack two monsters on that tile. If you miss and the monster is more than one tile away from you, place it one tile closer to you. Um, but even if you miss, you do a damage. Guess who has one hit point each? The orc archers. They are two tiles away. She could do a split the tree and no matter what, kill both of them. <laughs> I think, I think this is the only choice, right? Like this is, of course, we're going to do this. Um, and we don't even need to roll because even if we miss, we still hit both of them. Uh, so, yeah, those arc archers are gone. See ya, buddy. Jerks. <laughs> so we have spent our daily. Both orc archers are gone. This is when those daily powers really show their strength. Um, so that means haha, we can cancel an encounter. We have enough XP to cancel one more encounter and we get one treasure. And the treasure is a pouch of copper. It's another 100 gold pieces for Alyssa. Okay, that went really well. I'm really pleased with how that... Yeah, really, this is, the, this is a real kind of 
climactic heroic moment, right? She just like flies two tiles away, turns around with the bow, and just lets loose. That's uh, that's real Legolas stuff. Um, that was great. Okay, so that was her whole hero phase. Um, yes, yep, no, we're I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So Misaki is gonna move one more tile. Uh, towards the start tile. So all we have left is the air elemental and then whatever encounters we have to deal with and, until Misaki gets to uh, the start tile, which this we're still not out of the woods yet. We're Because we have no more XP. Well, that's not true. If we kill the air elemental, um, the air elemental is worth 5 XP. So we, we could cancel another encounter as long as we kill the air elemental. But that's only two more encounters we can cancel, um, one of which we're about to get. So... This is, this is right down to the wire. This is really tight. Okay. So Basaki has moved. We are now in the exploration phase. We're not exploring an edge, so we have to pull an encounter. Oh, boy. Hmm. Well, this is a tough call, actually. So here we go. Here's the encounter. Burning Sacrifice. Your hero takes one damage. Okay. Place a new monster on your hero's tile. So... That may not necessarily be a bad thing. Like, yeah, taking the one damage is a pain, but... I'm thinking maybe don't cancel this. Save save the 5 XP that we have for a really nasty encounter, because one more monster we can probably deal with. So, I'm saying we'll just take this one. We'll just take the hit. Uh, so, Alyssa gets one more hit point. I have got to get Arjan next to Alyssa to give her that healing potion. Um, really, you'd say cancel it, Jamie? You think so? I don't know. See, hmm. <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> we are really close to victory. But I'm nervous that we're going to get worse encounters than this, right? That are like guaranteed two damage each or something, and we cannot recover from that. So, although we do have the healing potions. <sighs> okay, you know what? I'm 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 following I'm following Jamie's lead here because I have terrible instincts for these things, so I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the advice. Always listen to to well-meaning advice. So we are canceling the burning sacrifice. Yeah, well, okay, yes, true. Um, the good part is this game has separated monsters into higher level and lower level, so we're not gonna get a crazy difficult monster where there are some that are bad but we're not going to get we're not going to get a troll right we're not going to get anything like that <sighs> but no i think you're right i think this is the safe play we cancel that uh one two three four five there we go that's all of our xp spent um and that never happened so that's Alyssa's whole turn uh, so, <laughs> now, Arjan. Um, Arjan, kill this fool, will you please? <laughs> just, just, you gotta do one damage. One. That's all you have to do. So he's gonna use Trapping. Trapping Strike is his, is his most useful thing right now. Um, or, what if... See, I think using a healing potion... Yeah, see, this is what I'm thinking. If he could move, get get adjacent to Alyssa, give her the healing potion. Maybe that's the play. Maybe not attacking the air elemental. But getting off of the air elemental's tile is the play here. So he moves adjacent to Alyssa, heals her, and then we just take the encounter because we're not exploring an edge. Um, but then the air elemental will move, attack Arjan, because I think he will attack Arjan. 
with the most hit points. Yes. Um, oh, hang on, most hit points left. <laughs> he may not attack Arjan. He may attack Alyssa. Uh, five, six, seven. So Arjan has three. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. They both have three. Sorry, I meant you put a damage on Alyssa for that event, but then you cancel the event. Oh, you know what? Don't worry about it. I think we're I think we're still okay. Um, because if if we do this, um, the 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 air elemental is only going to do one damage no matter what. So, um, that's okay. Yeah, I think we got it. And if we heal Alyssa, then we can handle whatever encounter happens. Um, I think that's probably the wise, the wise course of action. So we're gonna we're gonna move one, two, three, four, adjacent to Alyssa, and we are going to use our healing potion to heal her. Two hit points, and that is Arjan's uh, hero phase. Let's move the camera. This is getting real dramatic here. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I shouldn't forget that Alyssa's got these crazy ass uh, item that that ring of the ram. I totally forgot about that. She can do a, she can do a damage no matter what. So okay, we're actually in relatively good shape, provided that whatever encounter we're about to get isn't going to just murder us. Let's let's find out. Because that's Arjan's um, hero phase done. Now we go to the villain phase. And so that means first the air elemental is going to activate. And the air elemental is going to move towards our heroes. And hit with his blast of wind. Now which one he attacks is um, interesting. Because it says he... Oh, actually now it's not. It is, it is uh, Alyssa that he will attack. Because she has the most hit points remaining. Because she just healed. <laughs> so, okay, now it's now it's clear. So he's plus seven. He only has to hit AC 15. Oh, yeah, I think he hits. <sighs> all right, that's all right. He only does one damage. We're still okay. Um, but now we will get an event. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, did we get lucky or what? Each hero on a tile with no other hero takes two damage. There, each each hero is on a tile with another hero. Nobody takes damage. We got lucky. We got so lucky. <laughs> okay. That's Arjan's villain phase done. Now we are on to Alyssa's hero phase. <laughs> Jamie's like, yeah, can you believe it? Um, now we are on to Alyssa's hero phase. We have options. We have a number of options. <clears throat> I think the one we're going to take is the... So we have two things that can do a guaranteed one damage, and that's all that the uh, air elemental has. So we're going to use our careful attack. One adjacent monster takes one damage. No, we're not going to do the Umber Hulk Claws because we don't... A, we don't need that much damage, and B, it's a roll. We have to roll for it, and we might miss. <laughs> so we don't want to miss. Um... We only need to do one damage. Do we only do one damage? Five, six, seven, eight. Oh, crap. We need to do two damage. Ha <sighs> ha. Shit. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So, the other option, instead of the Claws of the Umber Hulk, is that Ring of the Ram. Claws of the Umber Hulk are a plus four. This is a plus five. 
if we hit, we do the two damage that we need. If we miss, we still do one damage. So I think this is the one uh, to use. So we only need to roll five or above because it's only AC 10. I think this is the one. We could kill it, and if we don't kill it, we'll get it down to one hit point. So. <laughs> Jeez. Come on, Alyssa. Um, so we're going to flip over that card. We still get to keep it, but it has to recharge between adventures or whatever. Oh, no, wait. No, we're good. We're good. I, thought, I saw a single digit, and I was like, ah, no, we're fine. Um because because that's seven plus five yeah we're fine uh so that's it the air elemental's dead so that means air elemental is gone we have five xp from the air elemental so we can cancel whatever encounter is about to happen um but before that misaki is going to move one tile now here's Here's a problem. Um, you'll notice that Misaki is now on the uh, the tile with the Rage of Imex on it. Um, so that means she has to take two damage, I think. I think it's two damage. I don't remember. One second. Let me just let me just make sure I'm doing it right. It would suck to not do it right. Let me just go through our list of used encounters here. Rage of Imex. Each hero on a tile with a Rage of Imex token takes two damage. So yeah, she will take two damage, um, which is not great because she only has three hit points. But, you know, that's what happens. Um, okay, so Misaki is gone. So now we move on to the exploration phase. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, so we're, we're not exploring an edge, so we have to pull an encounter. Um, so the good news is we've won. Like, we've already won the, the adventure. All we're doing now is seeing if uh, Misaki lives or not. Um, ooh. Oh, this is terrible. We are definitely canceling this. Magnetic rocks. Your hero loses 200 gold pieces or discards one tre item treasure card and then, then attack your hero for plus seven and does two damage. Um, no, <laughs> no, that's, no, that's not going to happen. We are spending our five XP from the, uh, air elemental to cancel that. So that's uh, Alyssa's entire turn. Now it is Arjan's turn. I mean, he doesn't really have to do anything. Um, yeah, <laughs> he doesn't. I mean, I guess we'll move him onto the start tile. Unfortunately, you know, there's no monsters to fight, but that also means there's no edges to explore. So we do have to pull an encounter Ooh, <laughs> and we can't cancel it. Oh well, oh well. This would suck. Wouldn't this suck? This would really suck. You know, what's, you know what he is going to do? He is going to use his other, that's his second action. He's, he's going to use his other potion of healing. Just to be safe. So that's two hit points that he heals. And our event is... Choking Ash. Attack your hero. Uh, choose a monster on your hero's tile. That monster activates. Um, yeah, the unavoidable encounters are just terrible. Um, but. Okay, so this is actually not that bad because there is no monster to activate. We still have to do this Choking Ash attack, but it's only going to do one damage. So this is actually okay. We're not... This isn't going to ruin everything for us. So we do have to attack Arjan. Um, we're plus seven. So it was going to roll ten or higher. Nope. Misses. Misses. No damage. Nice. Nice. That is what we want to see. 
Um, and that's Arjan's entire turn. So now we're back to Alyssa. Uh, you know, I guess she'll move here. Actually, she's not going to move, and I'll tell you why. Because um, a lot of events are, uh, like, attack all the heroes on your tile, right? Well, if she's not... If we get an event that's attack all the heroes on your tile, that's not going to attack Arjan, right? So we're going to stay on this tile. Um, and that's it. She's not going to move. She's not going to do any other action. That's a, her entire thing. However, Mizaki will now move up one tile. We're going to have to do one more tile! <laughs> and Mizaki can can get out safely. Um, unfortunately, that means two more encounters. <laughs> can we survive two more encounters? That's what this has come down to. Uh, and we have no more healing potions. We have nothing. We we just we have the health that we have, which in Alyssa's case is four, and in Arjan's case is five. So that's how much damage we can stand to take. Um, we did we did still count as winning this encounter though. So even if we even if we die now, this doesn't count as losing. So we will still move on to the next adventure for the next stream and get the bonus or get the uh, rewards. We just may not get the bonuses. That's all. That's so we've already won. That's the good. That's the good news. Uh, but we do have to pull an encounter. <sighs> Here we go. We can't cancel it. We just have to take this no matter what it is. Okay. See, here's where not moving has pulled off the advantage because it's an avalanche attack each hero on your hero's tile then move each hero uh, <laughs> on your hero's tile to an adjacent oh no um misaki is on that tile misaki counts as a hero for purposes of monster and events and she only has one hit point this is miss one damage misaki's been killed that's it there's no there's no way around this. We can't we can't mitigate this in any way. Um, so that's it. This is pretty much the end here, right? Because all we have to do, we know that Misaki got killed in the avalanche. Poor brass dragon wormling. Um, however, oh, what we do have to do is find out if Alyssa makes it out. Um, she will, because even if it misses, it only does, or if it hits, it only does two damage. It. Did 14, so it actually misses. So Alyssa only gets one more damage. Um, so our heroes are still alive. The air elemental has been defeated, but the brass dragon wormling didn't make it out. I know, I know. How close is that? Oh, so close. So the thing of that is, um, the way that these encounters work now is if we had made it out with uh, two or more healing surges, then we would add in some bonuses into the treasure decks, um, which we aren't going to get. So, I mean, I'll just read this out. Um, uh, aftermath. Uh, if Misaki survived or escaped the dungeon, the heroes have dealt a significant blow to the mysterious cultists. That didn't happen. Uh, if the heroes completed the adventure with two healing surges, that didn't happen. <laughs> if the heroes complete the scenario with fewer than two healing surges, instead make the following changes. Add distinct shot to the encounter deck. So there are two decks that come with this game. And as you complete adventures, you add cards from one deck to the active deck. So I'm going to have to open that deck up, pull out these cards. So you add distant shot encounter to the encounter deck, add a bag of silver treasure card to the treasure deck, which is like... 300 gold or something like that uh, and each hero gains 100 gold pieces so let me just put that out so i don't forget because i will forget if i don't put out the 100 gold each and i will stack the decks um off camera as i'm cleaning up so there we go adventure two done so we succeeded we didn't get we didn't get all the bonuses, but we still accomplished the adventure, which which is a bit surprising. So as you can see, it's always it always comes down to oh, so close. But anyway, I think that's gonna do it. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for stopping by, everybody. Thanks for the hosts. Um, we're gonna continue. So I think next time 
Um, I'm going to cycle out the games that I play, so I think next time, which I'm not sure exactly when it is, but, you know, stay tuned to my Twitter feed and, uh, and I'll announce it. Um, yes, <laughs> Ziploc bags and tackle boxes. Tackle boxes everywhere. These are, I have stacks of these tackle boxes now, <laughs> just they're all full of miniatures. Um, I think the next game that we're going to play is, um, uh, Imperial Assault, the Star Wars, uh, uh, single player version, which uses an app. So there's some interesting stuff that happens stream wise for that, that you'll, you'll see. But, uh, I think that's going to be the next one because that is also another encounter or I mean, um, campaign driven one that we're going to follow along storyline, like the same characters from adventure to adventure. So, uh, stay, stay tuned for that. Keep watching my Twitter feed and, uh, you'll find out when that is, um, probably in a couple of days. But uh, we'll see. Anyway, I'm going to process this video, put it up on YouTube, so we'll start the playlist for the D&D Adventures. And uh, that's it. So thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.